inside, and there's Charles bumping it. He's got a look. Oh, dead. Simone Lawrence will wrestle him down after four. And good teams, they find ways, and Calgary Stampeders, after giving up the touchdown, the long drive by Dan LaFever, all the momentum with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, they get a big return. It's the longest kickoff return of the year for Calgary, and Cunningham, who was able to choreographic, is now out as the receiver, replacing Fuller. He's played a hot hand. Tim St. Pierre is in the offense as well. He'll stay in the block. Only by Mitchell, trouble and drop. Harris with the sack as he adds to his resume tonight. I show you an example of a couple of things. First of all, Harris is having himself a game. I mean, off playing offensively on defense, also has an offensive touchdown, an interception, now a sack. And one other thing, how the evolution of the hits on the quarterback is continuing to grow and common sense being used by the officials on this play. I mean, there was a little bit of contact on the helmet from Harris, but not enough to draw a penalty flag. A good no call by the officials there. Mather looks for the pin. Line drive, Banks from his five, gets a block. Should've and that Keenan go in. McDougal will take him down at the 11-yard line. Should have let that go in. 48-yard boot, six on the return. Bakari Grant closing the gap with this touchdown. Have conceded a single there? Yeah, I, you just, I think the field position is so much more important with over 12 minutes to go. There's still so much football to be played that point not as important as the field position. They're starting at their 12 here, and here's Brandon Banks, and... He gets closed down quickly by Josh Bell after maybe a yard. Not to mention, Chris, now at the field position where it starts, Hamilton, if they're two and out here and don't gain any more yards from now, they have to decide whether or not to give up two where they are on the field or punt it out and have Calgary receive that punt in field goal position automatically. So seven yeah, times i would yeah. given up the single seven times they've started inside their 27 yard line three times inside their 12 including this time they have yet to have a two and out in the game trying to avoid it here second and nine pressure on lefevre escapes and flips it incomplete looked like he wanted to take off and then did he get hurt yeah he player. might have jammed something or twisted something Looked like he was going to take off and at the last second either changed his mind or came up lame. Well, it looked like he just tried at the last second throw it out of bounds and save what... Right there. He, oh, he, oh he, he pulled up and just got rid of the ball so he wouldn't get hit. Oh, I got to go. Yeah, no question. It looked like he was hurt. He, he was hurt before any contact. Right there. So the first two and out of the game for the Thai Cats and Medlock boots it and look at the field position here. Cunningham filled it that yeah. around the 50. He's down to the 35 yard line. So Calgary now in field goal position. When we come back. Working on the left knee of Dan Lefevre at the Nightcap bench, and you can see the discomfort he's in. Not a good sign when the no. player is waving off the tests to the knee because of the pain. Tough to see for a, a young guy showing so much promise in his fourth consecutive game start. For right now it's Bo Levi Mitchell trying to take advantage of great field position. Getting strung out here and getting taken down by Taylor Reed. Got enough of a paw on him to knock Bo Levi Mitchell off balance. Well, one more quick look at, and, and it, it was the knee that, that jammed. We'll take another quick look at Dan Lefevre and Jeremiah Mazzoli. Remember, Lefevre took over for Mazzoli in the Calgary game early in the year. 
and he gets the news that he's out. So we'll see Mazzoli when Hamilton gets the ball back. Cruel sport, isn't it? Yep. Second and 11. Mitchell out of the pocket, takes off, and he'll come up short. Dropped at the 30-yard line, so the Ticats register back-to-back two and outs. But hold them to a field goal. Calgary had field goal position when they caught that punt, and it goes back to Brandon Banks' decision to run that ball out a few plays ago. That was, by the way, back-to-back -back nice tackles by Taylor Reed at middle linebacker for the Hamilton Tiger Cat. So Rennie Paredes comes in. He has surpassed 600 career points so far in this game and looking for his third consecutive field goal of the afternoon. And it's now 12 straight on the year for Paradez. So Jeremiah Mazzoli comes in in relief of the injured Lefebvre, down by six. First start for Mazzoli, he went nine of 20 and was pulled for Lefebvre, and then Lefebvre took over from there. This was his fourth straight start. The ice pack's getting wrapped on that left knee for Dan Lefebvre, so he will be done for tonight, and it'll be Jeremiah Mazzoli if the Ticats want to come back here. 282 yards for Lefebvre passing, two touchdowns and interception. Nine rushes, 41 yards on his afternoon. So the game in the balance for Mazzoli, his first pass is on target to Ellingson. Quick out for five at the 40. Kent Austin liked a lot of what Jeremiah Mazzoli was doing early on, which is why he gave him that nod early when Zach Caleros went down. But there was a little issue with ball security. And Mazzoli just in key situations in a couple of games, lost the handle on the football and was a little sloppy with it. That's when the decision was made to go with Dan Lefevre. Second and five. Short drop, long pass, what a tasker, got a flag. Brandon Smith was in coverage. Saw the Stampeders bench erupt. Did he turn around tasker and is that why it's a 30 yard penalty against Calgary? Pass interference, Calgary number 28. Spot of the foul, first down, Hamilton. Well, you know, Tasker does a great job. For young players watching this, he, he draws the penalty because the, it's a corner route, but when he gets the ball thrown inside, he spins back to go and try and get it, even though he may have not got to it. Here comes the corner. Now watch, he turns back inside. That's when he's held. If he doesn't turn and gives up on that ball, there is no flag. Now Madhu inside and... Tackle made by Charleston Hughes. But a big penalty that gets the Ticats into field goal range. Mentioned that Medlock missed from 47 into the wind of the first half. He came out at halftime and, and hit a few from around 48 yards at this end of the field. And remember, he had the lace in that long one. It's only looking for more than a field goal here. And a nice snag by Pinks. Breaks a tackle and is dropped at the 30-yard line. He's going to be just short of the first down. Yeah, some of the young guys, and, and especially these little scat receivers, the tiny ones that like to bounce around and try and make people miss all the time. you got to know the situation. Now, he may be close enough. I think he is. Jumbo but he, team is coming on. But Chris, he didn't have to make it this close. I mean, Brandon Banks needs to turn up field and pick up the first down yards right now, not keep going laterally. He was tightrope walking that first down line. Know the down and distance and situation. Get up the field if you have to. John Levin showing some range there with the tackle, forcing this third down situation. Mazzoli's got the first down. Keon Raymond back into the game with first contact and extracurricular well after Mazzoli had earned the first down yardage.
This is the part of Jeremiah Mazzoli that Ken Austin liked. I mean, just the kind of the gunslinger mentality, get out there and start chucking it. And he looks like he's playing with great confidence coming off the bench here. Got up a little feisty fight back against the three defenders for the Stamps. Double tight ends. Bunch of receivers to the wide side and Mazzoli skips the pass incomplete. Boy, he didn't step into that throw at all. He just awkwardly tried to rush it. Former quarterback Ken Austin knows exactly what he did fundamentally wrong there. He sort of short-stepped it and then his, his lead foot slipped on him and that ball goes right into the turf. Like a little bit of a shot put, but second and 10. Five receiver set, Madu stays in, pressure on, pass complete. There's Shagir, down to the 25. He'll be short of the first down. Wall with the tackle, and the field goal team will come on. So we'll get an example of sort of the good and, and the concerns for Ken Austin. Encourages his backup quarterback on the sideline. By the way, Zach Caleros is not quite ready yet. Starting quarterback for Hamilton to start the season. So this is a 32-yard attempt for Medlock. Made from 52 with the wind as missed from 47 at this end. Timeout. Hamilton. I think they're short a guy. Hamilton Tiger Cats may be short a man, and they are. So they have to burn a timeout in a in a close game. And that's a costly timeout to take. And Arno Gascon Nidon comes onto the field. How big is that? Lost time out going to oh. be in the last minute or two. <laughs> Looking for three to get within three. And Medlock has put it through. So it's 23 20 for the Stampeders. Hugh Charles has been a factor in his first Stampeder game. He'll go back on offense with Bo Levi Mitchell and company when we return. Well, it's back. The Craft Celebration Tour Sports Center have hit the road once again. Stop number two sees Dutch and Keith hitting the stage in Nanaimo, B.C. Live coverage gets underway immediately following this game right here on TSN. Also watch on tsn.ca, TSN Go. Maybe they'll bring us back some Nanaimo bars from Nanaimo. Oh, that was a favorite as a kid. I saw Kate on Twitter last night. She had, she had some. So under six minutes left. Three-point game, Medlock kicking it off. Cunningham had a big kick return earlier in the second half. And he'll bring it out to the 39. Well, let's take a look at Hugh Charles. Afternoon so far. It's about what Hugh Charles is about. I mean, he steps in and makes nice block early on and, and is good at blocking. You know, he's efficient running the football. He had nine carries so far for 68 yards, as long as the 27-yarder. About what he is about, and that's when I talked to Dave Dickinson this week. I said, what do you expect from him? He said, well, he's good to have a doctor, no ball. He can beat you, get outside with his quickness, so he's done and basically what they expected him to do. Crowd getting loud, the Stamps have back-to-back two and outs. And they give it to Charles, trying to get outside, and Simone Lawrence with the tackle, but that's a good first down first of nine. Well, right now, this series is setting up nicely in that matchup that I mentioned off the top of the show with Dave Dickinson and his play calling against Orlando Steinauer, defensive coordinator for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and him trying to find a counter. Does he come with more safety blitz and get Craig Butler up and involved like he did in that third quarter and second quarter? 
And if so, what will be the answer for a guy like Dave Dickinson with a young quarterback like Bo Levi Mitchell to say, hey, if you see that safety come out of the middle, throw it to the hole. Mark Wade McDaniel, Joe West, there's always a counter punch. And Orlando Steinauer without his starting defensive end, Antonio Coleman, lost near halftime with the neck injury. Okay, coach, replay here, or? I get the first down here. You get the first down. And you got the lead, try and, and wind down some more time off the clock and then finish this drive with points. Steinauer wants to try and get that football back for his offense right now. You take in. And the plunge ahead will be enough for the first down. So Dave Dickinson, who, when I talked to him today, talked about how much he respects a lot of Steinauer. Of course, Dickinson, the quarterback for the Calgary Stampeders, played in a couple of great cups against Steinauer. Also with the BC Lions, Steinauer, of course, was with the Toronto Argonauts, but a great quarterback, second to only Ricky Ray, career completion percentage, Dave Dickinson, and now the two guys who competed on the field compete as coaches. Well, you can see the chess match out there. Oh, yeah. Both teams changing their calls, and Taylor Reed getting to the quarterback. Flag flies. Bo Levi Mitchell dropped back at the 40. See what the call is. It's going against Calgary. Well, they brought the safety. So Steinauer gambles here, and he, and he takes the safety out of the middle, saying... Holding Calgary, number 69. That penalty's declined. Second down. Brett Jones, the center, called on the hold. It's a loss of 10 on the sack by Reed. And that's four sacks in the game for the Ticats. Seven up. One of them being Craig Butler. And they turn in to be eight. Too much pressure for Mitchell to get the ball to that hole. Now we'll see on second down if Steinauer gambles again. Not this time. Second and 20. Four-man rush. Mitchell has time as a receiver. And it's Campbell with a first down. They convert on second and long again. Right at the marker. And Steinauer can't believe it. This time he backs off and does not pressure Mitchell. Gives him more time to throw, and Mitchell finds Campbell right here on this end, and that's a mistake. Yeah. Two receivers in the same couple, and he can't believe after an offensive mistake they can't get the knockdown. Uh, this has been a problem.